This is Market Week Live, January 26, 2024, information and support for traders and investors. Welcome to you all. This is great. I want to remind all of those that are our members that are in the Zoom link that you can ask questions uh, and those go in the Q&A. We won't take any questions on the stock market because I'm going to do the stock market review at the end of the show. But you could ask about futures. You could ask about equities. And if we have that information, we will be glad to illustrate to you our style of analysis. Let's move forward right now. This is the legal that we have to look at. It says that everything we do here at Ask Slim is for entertainment and educational purposes only. It's not investment or trading advice. And everything we do at AskSlim.com, whether it be oral, written, done in video, any way that we do it, and any way we refer to anything relating to our website, is for information that could be used by a person or entity uh, in discussions with their investment advisors and or investment decision makers. It is not a substitute for advice from an investment advisor. You should always consult your own trading plan or financial professionals before making uh, decisions. And you can see our legal, full legal, by going to AskSlim.com at the website. Our hosts today are our full um, contingent of analysts here at AskSlim. Uh, of course, uh, if you're brand new, then you wouldn't know that I've been around for almost 50 years doing this trading uh, Matt's uh, been around for a couple of decades, RV for very similar, maybe a decade and a half. And Katie, I don't really know how long you've been trading in the markets, but you're acting like you've been around for 50 years also. So uh, another great professional in the markets, and you've seen her great expertise in option trading uh, and her use of that Tasty Trade platform. If you want to know more about us, go to AskSlim.com, meet the team, uh, and uh, in the About Ask Slim tab, and you will see the interviews in there that we have done. This, uh, for information, uh, of whether it's membership issues or website issues, you write to team at slim.com. Anything about our content or info on education or analysis or our first-time specials or upgrades, you can write to Matt at slim.com. All right. Well, what's going to go on in this show is I'm going to give you my opening comments on the brief side today. We have all of our hosts here, and we're all going to do some trade planning with you where we do analysis and talk about each of those trade ideas. And you'll learn our total approach to trade planning when we do that. Matt is going to review our services, and you can see the amazing depth of the content that we have. And he has a great special that's only going to be around for this weekend. Do you want to take care of that? Uh, if you're a free member or level one, you might want to upgrade. So uh, this is a great uh, opportunity to do that. Uh, and then we're going to have our express round, uh, the questions that you may have at, on Ask Slim or Ask Slim Services. Uh, and those will be, again, by uh, people that are level one to four members that have been invited into the Zoom um, and through, through the Zoom link. Uh, there are many people out there watching through YouTube right now, hundreds and hundreds. And we welcome you, of course, and love you to become an Ask Slim member, even a free member, so that we uh, begin the relationship with you. And the floor will be yours uh, for those questions. Then I'm going to take a deep dive looking at the S&P 500 multiple time frames and the market condition monitor. Uh, that's a, a, just a, a mind-boggling app that we have uh, that you can use for uh, any uh, style of trader that you are. So I'll, I'll illustrate that to you. Uh, again, how to watch the show? Well, premium members, you get sent a link to participate, free and non-members uh, on YouTube. You can watch it there. Ask Slim Team is our channel, and we have some of the older videos that we put up there also. You can get an idea for what we do, and our live shows are broadcast through that. Here's my opening commentary on the market. <clears throat> the stock market, as we all know, has continued its upward march. Uh, with negative news really barely causing a twitch in the indexes at all, and positive news lifting them to new all-time highs. Example, well, Triple M earnings came out uh, on Tuesday, and uh, they were bad. The stock collapsed, and the Dow went down early. It was down pretty strongly, but then came back on the close. The Dow was not very little changed, and we had a pretty good upside move in the indexes. Then on Wednesday, Netflix had a huge beat and the indexes screamed to the upside. So Triple M, which is a pretty big industrial stock, 
couldn't really hurt the market. And then Netflix comes out with what is likely a one-time beat that was very anomalous because of uh, their crackdown on the password sharing. And so a lot of people had to sign up to get the service. And uh, so that big bulge uh, helped the market uh, and the market moved up very strongly. Also help came from China. Uh, who's putting in a huge stimulus plan, uh, and that's to save their real estate market and to save their stock market that's literally been in meltdown. Uh, and I'm going to illustrate uh, BABA and FXI to you in just a few minutes. So uh, that really helped the market also. So that was a good upside move in the indexes. Thursday, we saw a stronger GDP, and that also lifted stocks. And IBM, which may be coming the next AI stock, Actually, I'm going to kick Tesla out of there, and I'm going to add IBM to that, into the Magnificent Seven. So uh, IBM uh, had great earnings, and they're really showing that, you know, their their service sector did really well. And I think when you look at AI and monetization of AI, you have to look at what stocks, like uh, stocks that are supplying the chips or stocks that have the service sections, their companies have the service departments that can help uh, big companies add AI for implementation, those are the ones that are going to do well. So IBM had a huge gain, and I would not be surprised if this was just the beginning of further gains for IBM. At the same time, on that day, Tesla and Humana both collapsed. 12% on the downside. The, the Humana move killed the Dow uh, for a few minutes, and uh, the bonds, well, they were up even on a stronger GDP on Thursday and the index is up. The index is up with uh, stocks like Tesla and Humana getting cracked and uh, the stronger GDP, which you would have think would have hurt bonds. Well, that just gives you an idea of the kind of buying that is in this market right now. Friday, the PCE deflator came out. This is the Fed's favorite uh, inflation indicator. The news were kind of mixed because it was a little hotter on the headline number, three tenths of a percent up, but the year over year was up uh, 2.9 percent versus 3 percent. It's not the 2 percent the Fed wants yet. And uh, if you uh, talk about the Fed, I mean, with the stock market at all time highs and the unemployment rate at 3.7 percent, you got to really wonder, you know, how is the Fed going to actually cut rates as much as people are talking about this year? I think there's some disappointment uh, going to come uh, because the inflation numbers are not that beautiful yet. After all, all that inflation we had over these last couple of years, it didn't go away. There's no decline in deflation. We have some disinflation going on, but it's still going up 3% a year. So that still makes things more expensive. And for some reason, the government doesn't want us to ever pay less for anything. So earnings for the week, uh, both good and bad. Uh, here on Friday, American Express, good, uh, and up 7% 7, 7 or so. And that has lifted the Dow also, which is a little bit stronger. Uh, and uh, bad on the bad side here today, Intel, well, down about 11% on the day. That was disappointing. And that knocked the semiconductor stocks on the, and the techs. But this market just doesn't want to go down yet. Uh, it's really unbelievably strong. As a matter of fact, on the Intel news, the E-mini futures, they were down 26 points overnight. And then they moved back to the upside. So for the stock market, well, the rise that we have right now is well in line with our analysis. We are looking at momentum, cycle configuration patterns. Everything that we look at has been pointing to the upside. And we haven't been shy about saying that. Though the S&P 500, well, it's only about 100 to 150 points from the high that I saw for this year, which I thought would be another bull market year, an extension of what we saw last year with a big dip in the middle. And my analysis hasn't changed. But again, that high that I saw in the stock market, I saw for the second half of the year. And the stock market now is extended and it's moved up to some resistance areas. And I'll show you that in the S&P 500. And then of course, there's that unbelievable valuation again, historic valuations up and getting close to now that 190% of GDP. And that is going to be a problem for this market this year. And that's why we think that there's not a whole lot of upside left. 
When you think about that, though, I mean, maybe there's a few percent, five percent potential left on the upside for this year. But then again, bear markets, when they come, their average about more than 30 percent kind of makes it a six to one negative risk reward, if you ask me, if you're a long term investor. I'll show you my analysis for the intermediate term uh, and the shorter term as we get into the stock market analysis at the end of the show. And I'll do that deep dive in the S&P 500. Stocks for the week, uh, you know, plus or minus around 1% to the upside. The Russell is the best, but it was the worst. It's depressed. And it's still looking bad overall on our analysis, though it did manage to get a better bounce uh, in the market. Bond market, 30s. Uh, they're down about a half a point, but the 10 years didn't quite do as bad. So the yields on the 10 year were about unchanged on the week. Gold market, not a very big move up about, about $5. Silver up about 12 cents. Uh, and both of these, I think, are a few days away from making a bottom. I think they're getting into their bottoming process right now. Maybe silver is a little bit ahead of gold on that. And I think we're going to see at least a short term move to the upside starting very soon. Dollar, tiny move to the upside. I think in the next few weeks, we're going to see it turned down and maybe turned down sharply. Even 100 is a possibility on the DXY. And I think that's going to be a boost for those metals. Oil up 285. This is much improved. I still think there's a, there's a, a low coming, in other words, a decline in the bottom into the March period but it is not likely to be anywhere as deep as I had originally expected. So that's everything for the week here at midday here on Friday the 26th. If you're new to Ask Slim, get acquainted. Go to our front page and click on the snapshot light. That's free. You'll be able to get stock market information that Matt puts out every single day. Fantastic. And that's a good way for you to get a good feel for what we do here at Ask Slim. On YouTube, subscribe to our channel uh, at Ask Slim Team and uh, click the notification bell and you'll know when we put up videos. Give this video a thumbs up and on X, follow me at Ask Slim. Any questions you have on anything that we show you today, write to Matt at AskSlim.com. All right, this is Trade Planning with the Ask Slim Team. From the analysis to the trade idea. This is what we're going to show you today. What we all do is we individually look at uh, our analysis because we all do a tremendous amount of analysis every single week. And then we look at what pops out at us as what is likely to be a pretty good opportunity. These will generally be points at turns in cyclical patterns at, uh, 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 at areas that we see peaks for short, short, uh, uh, short side trades for areas that we see negative stocks that have had consolidations that are likely to turn down again or the opposite for positive stocks. There's all different variations of what we might see that really pops out at us as an opportunity. And I'm going to show you that right now as I switch over to the chart of Alibaba. What's really interesting about Alibaba is that, well, it's come from $319 all the way down to close to $60. That's uh, over these last three years. And you can see this huge downside move. And the Chinese market has gotten annihilated. I want you to see on the bottom, there are cycle brackets. And do not confuse cycle brackets with actual cycles. They are just simply a drawing tool and a guide for us to see where we see repeating patterns in the market. And then how the cycles actually resolve themselves is actually up here on the price chart. And you can see how that there's key important troughs in, in areas. These lines that you see right over there are showing where the actual troughs came, the actual lows. And this is where the ideal would have been. And that's normally three, three four bars on either side uh, of where the ideal, and you can see how that works out here. Now, I'm just going to look at these last three cycles right over here so you can get an idea where we are. Now, China, as I said, is trying to stimulate their economy because they have huge problems in the real estate market. They have big problems in the stock market, which has really moved down. I'll show you FXI in a moment, just on the weekly chart, so you get an idea. This is really what's significant. You can see these rhythms on these big charts. Remember that 
when the when these energies are rising, as you see right here in the stock, the peaks could be anywhere in the cycle. And just because a cycle is coming uh, down or just because it's rising, you see right over here, it's still rising, but see the stock was falling. This doesn't mean it's going to continue to rise. What we do is get information out of the actual price action to help us and momentum conditions that you could see right in here have turned down. And this is the Aslim reversal scout that we have here. This is a level four uh, indicator right there. And uh, if you want our free indicator for momentum, that would be the Slim Ribbon. And uh, you can get that. It's on many platforms. So the uh, when it turns up, as you could see right over here, you get into those positive patterns as it did right over here. And guess what? It didn't turn up here. But we have this engulfing pattern that occurred. In other words, it made a lower low and it's closing above. So it's actually engulfing two different weekly bars right there. And that tells us that, you know, it's very likely that a bottom is forming right over here. With all the money that's being pumped by China, it's pretty likely that that's going to happen. I have a note here to remind me momentum is negative. So we're anticipating that this is a bottom. And anticipating is okay. And if you're a trader, we always say anticipate with a quarter or a third of a position. You're not going to get into a full position. You're going to want to do that when you have some confirmation in the pattern. So uh, you can see these two lines right over here. They tell us that somewhere plus, uh, either side of that ideal low, and there are one, two, three minor cycles that are very clear, as you could see right in here. Once they trough in here and then move up, you uh, start to get bigger upside moves. And as you see, it happened over here, it really began to accelerate. A couple of weeks, it moved up a little bit and then turned up very sharply. Of course, this move right over here was from 60 to 120. That was a double just in the first part of this cycle right over here. This one over here was uh, from around 77 to around 102. So that was uh, about a, uh, what was that, 45% move? So you, this could be a big move in here. I mean, 50% uh, from 67 takes you all the way up into the 90s. And you see the resistance there at 90, approximately 89. So this is the beginning, likely, of a move. Let's look at the daily chart right over here. And the daily chart has a little shift in it. And this is we have a lot of we have a lot of people that ask us about this. They see this ghosted out cycle right over here. That was where it was actually making the bottoms. You could see where those troughs came and lined up. But this cycle went pretty long, as you can see. So it creates a shift. And then we put these dotted cycles in there because they help us understand where that shift is. And you see, as you go back, it doesn't make that much difference, right? But there's been an energetic shift, and that often comes when there's a lot of selling and a washout happening. And you can see now, just look at these last few cycles right over here. This is now moving up, and this resistance uh, over here is at 77. This is at 80. And this one at the 78.6 is at 83. So this is likely to move up and then move down and set up a good buy, but not get below this low here at 67. So this is a very good pattern in here. As far as seeing a bottom coming, you could see on the bottom the Slim Ribbon PO. You see how red it was in those down arrows telling you expect momentum resumptions as it did. It just turned blue right over here. We want it to turn green. We want the Slim Ribbon to go green and in positive configuration as our first sign that there's actually a momentum shift going on. I'm going to switch over now to the weekly FXI, just so that you could see that the energies in China are changing also. Here's that big decline in China as it comes down from 54 right over here all the way down to 20. So that was about a 60-something percent loss in China. And look at the cyclical patterns and how they line up, as you could see, the negative momentum that we still have. But still, look what happened here where you had that engulfing pattern way back over here, and that is it in October of 22, and how that was the signal, and then the momentum turned up, and then you knew we were off to the races on the upside. The momentum here has not turned up yet. So again, we'll be looking for momentum to turn up in China, and specifically on the daily chart first, 
and then we will know. But right now you have a setup right here of a bottom that is forming. We call this in the bottoming phase of Alibaba. And that means if you are interested in it, you nibble. You just get a toe in there and that will keep it on the radar for you. And if it's wrong and it goes to lower lows, you don't get hurt by very much. If you start to get confirmations and you add on, then you can really start to hit good size trades without taking big risk. That's my look at Alibaba and China. And I'm going to turn this over to Katie for Nike. Okay, let me just share my screen. Let me know when you can see the cycle low timing tracker. Yes, we have it. Okay, great. So I'm going to look at analysis in Nike, which suggests a bearish bias. Now, I, I identified this opportunity by looking at the cycle low timing tracker. Nike is down here in the in sync box. Generally speaking, symbols in this box are expected to show weakness and or suffer breakdowns because the timing of their daily cycles aligns with a period of time on the weekly chart when we expect a low to form. And you'll see what that looks like when we look at the chart. A couple other Ask Slim tools that you can look at for confirmation of the bias, the Slimulator ranking system is here, shows bearish bias in Nike. And the Ask Slim Momentum Tracker is also showing very bearish in Nike. It's right here. So now let's switch over to the chart. This is the weekly chart of Nike on the bottom. We have a dominant 26 bar cycle um, and it is broken into minor half cycles. And these cycle brackets are a drawing tool that help us visualize the money flows into and out of a symbol. The vertical black dotted lines show us where the cycles formed their lows relative to the ideal cycle troughs shown by the cycle brackets. Over here on the right, we have blue vertical dashed lines that show the period of time around the next ideal cycle trough when we would expect the current intermediate cycle in Nike to form a low and begin to move up again into the rising phase of the next cycle. And that period of time runs from February 12th to March 22nd. Notice that our proprietary momentum indicator, the reversal scout that Slim was talking about, turned negative right here after this large bearish candle, rejecting from the 78.6% fib of the previous cycle. Now, our initial target here is at the 78.6% fib of this cycle, and that is around $96. Switching over to the daily chart, you'll see more clearly the weakness that Nike is experiencing. We had a negatively configured previous cycle, meaning that it ended lower than where it began. Then Nike couldn't even get up into the resistance zone in the rising phase of this cycle before breaking down below the cycle low support. So we have created this minor resistance zone using the FIB tool on this presumed cycle high and this low. And um, <clears throat> we've um, gotten up into that zone today. So we would expect this area to hold and for Nike to move back down into the cycle timing window here, which is projected from February 9th to February 20th. So now that Nike is trading up into this zone, we wanna see this area hold and for price to turn back down and give us an entry signal. That would be a momentum continuation to the downside signal down here on the Slim Ribbon PO and or a return to negative momentum on the two hour chart. I personally tend to look for both as confirmations of each other. Now, there are a couple things to pay attention to here. Look at these notes that RV put in. These are important to pay attention to. There was an adjustment to this cycle earlier this month, making it one bar shorter on this presumptive low. He also put in a repair level at the current cycle peak. If we got through that level, it would suggest that this is the low of the prior cycle instead of this earlier one. 
And um, that would not change our bearish bias. Look what happens if you put these back to the original 26 bars. It lines up perfectly with that low. Um, so as I said, that would not change the bearish bias that we have in here, but it would change the levels where we would look for an entry and it would push this daily cycle timing period out by about a week. So this is February 26th. It is still syncing up with the weekly cycle timing window when we're looking for that intermediate low. So that's why it's not changing our bias. Uh, that intermediate low was from February 12th to March 22nd. This fits within that time frame, and that's why it's on the cycle low timing tracker. So if this is the rising phase off of the low, it is still certainly not impressing us with its strength. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on how Nike behaves here. As far as option strategies, Nike currently has a low IV rank that would suggest long premium strategies. So you could buy a put around, I like to use around the 70 Delta. You could also look at other strategies such as a put debit spread uh, or even a put zebra for a stock replacement strategy. So I'll be updating our members going forward with regard to an options trade idea in Nike. All right, Ted, thanks Katie. Let's uh, go ahead and jump over to TOL. We'll uh, look at a short-term short idea and then I'll hand this off to Matt to look at a long-term intermediate term trade idea in WIN. So let me go ahead and take over the screen and uh, we'll pull up toll. Okay, so this is the both weekly and daily chart here for TOL. So first thing we have to note in in this chart is we're seeing a series of higher cycle highs, higher cycle lows. Okay, so the overall core look here is still bullish. However, we have run quite a ways here on the upside and we're due to form a higher low flag. And that's really what we are looking for. Uh, and then for a bounce off of this zone right here, you can see this zone right here is right around the... 9160-ish area to 82 half uh, in TOL. And then we'll be looking for a bounce off that zone with our next key trough that's only due out in the summer of 2024. We shift over to the daily time frame. Okay, so we we are looking for this to fail basically right around here um, from 9845 to 131. And then if it ends up moving through 102.43, this would be marked as a loser. And we're looking for a move down into this zone from the 38.2 to the 50, 91.49 to 87 even, and a low that is due right around 213 to 229. Keep in mind, there is earnings here. We will not have this on, um, um, you know, as a short idea going into earnings. This will, will be pulled prior to that. We don't hold any trade ideas into earnings since anything can happen on earnings as we have seen. But you can see we have had a really solid move up, formed our low right there. And then we have now lost this low at um, at this uh, area right here. We have traded below it and are just forming this really small little move back on the upside. We're looking for this to turn back down and roll over uh, into the zones that I mentioned. Okay, so that's the look there at Toll. And I'm going to go ahead and hand this off over to you, Matt, uh, for a long idea in win. All right. Thank you, RV. Great work, everyone. Share my screen. Okay, so as RV mentioned, I'll be taking a look here at Wynn Resorts and looking at a, uh, well, let me take a step back. So as, as traders, we have to wear multiple hats. We have to be able to clearly define a methodology for ourselves, one, and then we have to be able to convert that methodology into technical evidence in the form of analysis. And then we need to be able to also bring that to a place where we say we have a trading plan and we have an edge that we want to act on. So I always like to, whenever get asked from members about questions around the charts, I always try to frame it into that trade planning context with starting with what's that outlook period. So you saw today when Slim introduced the segment, we have an outlook period. It's very important to know what out outlook period that you're looking at because that will drive the time frames that you're using for your information. And then we, once you have your, your charts, the time frames based on your outlook period, you want to 
uh, determine your directional bias. So you have to have a methodology that can help you determine directional bias. And then we wanna be able to produce key levels. Uh, those would be both our, our projections as well as our reevaluations that let us know that the analysis that we did is likely uh, changing and we need to reevaluate that potential position that we have on, whether that would be take it off or uh, lessen it up. And then once you've uh, gone through your analysis, you, you want to uh, make sure that you actually have a tradable edge. And, uh, and then from there, what are the signals that suggest that trade setup is a go? And, and obviously, you want to always make sure that your risk and money management rules are in place. Okay, so that's sort of the framework for it. Now let's look at win here. And on the weekly chart, you can see here that we made a cycle low here in um, towards the end of December. And it came a little bit early. And previously, it was, it was in a negative uh, overall pattern structure here as it came in. However, as I'm looking at this now, this current price action with this early low that formed, there's several uh, positive indications that are generating a overall a bullish or long side bias here. First, we're in a rising phase that you can see here still on the weekly cycle, and it is performing uh, fairly well at this time. Uh, with the momentum indicator is positive at this time. And in terms of the minor uh, weekly uh, cycle structure or pattern structures here, you can see that we've taken out some of these prior highs. So overall, that gives me a further confidence or conviction that at, at this point, we have a positive shape that is uh, developing uh, in win on this intermediate time frame, and not looking for a real huge move here in terms of uh, upside, but looking for some upside. And I'll get to those levels here in just a second. So that's the weekly chart. Now I'm going to go over to the daily chart, and that's important to look at because we also have positive momentum here. The slim ribbon shifted positive here. Uh, it was about 1220 or so. 12. Uh, let's see, 1218, 1219, and has held that positive overall momentum since we put a recent cycle low, a bottom in place here in about mid January, and now are in a new rising phase. Uh, on, on the daily cycle as well. So we have rising phases. So we have some alignments going on between the two timeframes, which is always important as you're looking at things. So if I line this up with the weekly chart on the left, the daily on the right, you can see that there's alignments that we have right now in terms of that cycle timing. So all, you know, I'm pulling together all that technical evidence. And just in the last couple of days, we've got above that 78.6, two further confirmations of bullish indications. And again, there are no certainties. There's only the odds. And all you're trying to do is put that technical evidence uh, together so that you can suggest to yourself that you have an overall edge. All right. So now let's go back and let's look at our projections on the upside. We're looking at over the next three to eight weeks that we would get up into this uh, projection zone up here. First testing that 61.8 intermediate fib around 100.75 and getting up close to about 103 is what I'm looking for at this point. And if we got a breach of that prior cycle low, that would require reevaluation of this projection zone, but not necessarily eliminate the uh, long side bias until I would see a close below the 61.8. This is, would be especially be the case if we can break out again above this prior cycle peak. We had one breakout in the prior cycle, one more would likely suggest that this low that occurred is a very important uh, basing cycle. So a pullback would then suggest that we shouldn't break down and that we would see then another attempt to hire, whether that happens in this cycle or the next one. So that's the, the overall look there in terms of directional bias, key levels, uh, reevaluation levels. And then you want to be looking for signals that suggest the trade is a go. Now, that is up to each and uh, each one of us to determine what those are. Typically, I like to look for momentum confirmation signals, price breakouts uh, predominantly. So we had that cycle low uh, that occurred. And today you can see the reversal scout just starting to turn up. So that would be an indication that the continuation of this rising phase is likely in motion. And this could be a signal that would suggest a trade is a go. Again, all depends on your, your trading style, uh, but this would be one that I'd be looking for. And then I would jump down into that shorter duration time frame. See if I can find my multiple time frame grid here that our level four members have access to. Essentially, you can plug in any symbol you want. 
And we have four time frames here, weekly, daily, two hour and 15 minute. And, and this is our, our dashboard uh, for really getting a quick sense at a glance of our proprietary indicators. And you can see here again, as I pointed out on that daily chart, you can see the reversal scout just turning up and also on the two hour chart. So we'd be looking for these two hour chart to continue to show positive momentum. So if there was a pullback and it went neutral or negative in the two hour, as long as we, we stayed positive in the daily and the weekly, those would be some other opportunities to look for um, that that advance was likely continuing. All right, so there is my review of win. Back to you, Slim. All right, great work by the whole team there. And all of you watching, you get a great idea as to how we approach our analysis in the market, which of course I think is very different than most of the other analysts out there. Great work. All right, so now we are going to switch over and we are going to um, show you some of our services. Matt does a great job reviewing our services. Plus he's got a great special to show you. So Matt, take it back. All right, thank you, Slim. Okay, I'm going to make this uh, brief. I know everyone's excited to get into the Q&A and then Slim's uh, index analysis. But for those of you that are newer out there and haven't had a chance to uh, take a look at what we offer, this gives you a quick little glimpse into that. And, and also, as Slim mentioned, for those of you that might be uh, in our free levels in terms of our overall free membership or you just subscribe to that snapshot light, I wanted to make sure that you know what's available. Uh, today, I'm going to focus on level two, but as Slim mentioned, also, we do have tremendous depth in terms of what we offer with our technical analysis services, our trade planning education, and the tools that we've built. What really separates our premium membership levels is going to be the size of the, of the universe in terms of the number of symbols that are covered. You know, as we go from level one, level two, level three, level four, you know, level one, it's a primarily a focus on index analysis, and then we do the uh, spider ETF review. So there's a, a number of symbols there, key symbols, uh, but you really get a, a sense of our overall methodology and introduction to it. And then you have that uh, very uh, advanced uh, momentum tracker that you can plug in a lot of symbols. So you get an introduction to our core methodology plus our, our momentum uh, methodology through the simulator. And then as you, as you proceed uh, further along in the premium memberships, you get more coverage uh, and I'll show that again with level two. And then as you get into levels three and four is really where, depending on your trading styles, the, the how active you are, how much knowledge you want to gain uh, in terms of technical analysis and understanding a methodology and, and seeing a real a methodology put into practice on a daily basis, that's what you're really going to experience in level three and level four. Level three is going to introduce you to uh, some of our automated uh, technical tools like the ranking system, uh, our, our market conditions monitor. So we have several additional tools. We have chart streams where you get to see our indicators live uh, for a number of symbols on a, on a daily basis. And then for, for those of you that want to go all in, in terms of uh, you're, you're active or you want to learn a ton and you want to get direct access to what we do in terms of our charts, indicator studies, and the premium uh, tools that we have, that would be at that level four. And then what again, what separates what these levels bring is your style. So we really do offer services for those of you that might be uh, position traders looking out one to three to four or five months or beyond with the Slimulator Momentum Tracker and our weekly cycle analysis. Uh, and then for those of you that are more active near term, short term, intermediate traders, you know, that level two, level three. And then for those of you that are, you know, very active uh, uh, would be that level four or just really, really want to get your hands on on our indicators. But then if you are truly a day trader, regardless of any other style, we do have a new service for that. And we're going to highlight that in depth uh, in a couple of weeks. But that is up and running. And we've had a lot of great feedback and we've put a ton of uh, resource time, energy into that that new service. All right, so quickly here, I'm just going to jump over to the level two dashboard. Um, let me get that pulled up. And there, there's a lot. I mean, with the level two membership, you really do get an introduction, a deep, immersive opportunity to understand the ESLIM methodology. 
uh, because you're going to get specific services that give you a, a weekly coverage and daily coverage to the daily snapshot. But then RV and Slim, they tag team our future speak uh, video with Slim doing the analysis on the charts and then RV going through the analysis in a video format. Uh, it, it is an incredibly uh, deep understanding of what we do. Uh, and we make it extremely easy to find uh, what is covered. Even if you're not a futures trader, what you will learn from this is really how to apply the methodology across other types of markets or stocks or ETFs. So if you haven't checked that out and you are currently a member, I would strongly recommend that you, you watch it, put it on two speed or, or one, whatever, but give yourself an opportunity to step through these future speaks on a regular basis. If you haven't found Ask Slim, this, just this video itself is really worth uh, the level two membership uh, experience. Jumping back, and I'm just going to cover a couple of these really important ones. Uh, but obviously, we have, I've, we hear us talk about our trader library. We're doing some really cool things with uh, making it even easier and easier to surface everything that we have in there. We have over 600 videos with so many of them that are evergreen that Slim and RV and myself and Katie have done over the years. Uh, Slim probably doing more than 300 of those uh, that really they they don't that's why they're called evergreen they don't ever get old and so we have a huge library uh, of of videos that are available <clears throat> and then we're always adding to those videos and it's really important to note that RV once a week for our members level two and higher allows for requests to come in and he covers 15 symbols a week where basically what you saw us do with that trade planning process. RV does that on 15 symbols that come in from request on Discord, and we post that video. Uh, he posts that video uh, once a week. Again, it's just an incredible way to understand our process and to see it in action. It's not just us talking at a high-level textbook. It's taking that textbook knowledge and then putting it into action on a regular basis. So this is a, a, a phenomenal opportunity to learn from the team and also get some personalization come in. Uh, on a regular basis and be able to connect with other Ask Slim members because as I said, this request comes in on, on Discord. And on Discord is, uh, we have a, a, a number of channels. They're set up very uh, organized way, similar to what you see on our, our website in a way. So depending on your membership level, you'll have different access to uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, channels on Discord. And as I mentioned about office hours, this is where RV will get his Q&A going with the members, and then he'll post his recordings on there as well as on the site. So again, this is another fantastic level two uh, product that you know, in and of itself is, is worth that monthly uh, price on that. Let's see if there's anything else I was missing. I think I covered everything I wanted to. And, oh, well, no, I wanted to make sure that, you, that everyone knows that we do have that charts hub. I cover that. I've covered that probably several weeks in a row, but in terms of our universe of symbols, uh, we have an extremely broad one that we look at, but then we narrow it down to about 84, 85 symbols that we cover on a, on a regular basis, daily, weekly basis. You can see on the left-hand side, all of those from major uh, stocks, ETFs, then you have futures markets. Uh, really, you don't need a different universe than the one that we have here. I'm not saying you can't. Uh, but if you're you know, relatively new to trading or you just have way too many symbols that you, you cover and you want to really get to know, because you really need to get to know these symbols like they're your customers, the behavior, uh, and, and, and know that you have a team of analysts doing that work, uh, that's what you'll have here. And if you click on one of the symbols, it will default to the weekly chart. And you can also look at the daily chart. So you got the key levels, you got the cycle analysis on there. And that's available uh, on all of those symbols, just like I'm showing you here. Okay, final thing is on the homepage, if you're interested in this opportunity with level two, we have your first month is only $29.50. So for about $30, you would get access to everything that I showed today. It is only available for three more days. And then we'll move on to another opportunity coming in a couple of weeks. Just click on the learn more. And that'll take you to uh, the, the highlights overview and you can purchase that level two membership. If you are a level one, you would get reimbursed for whatever you would have remaining. All right, back to you, Slim.
Wow. I mean, that is a lot. Uh, <laughs> all of that for just twenty nine fifty. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 It would be life changing if if you want to understand technical analysis and trade planning. You're giving away uh, eight years of me creating videos for twenty nine fifty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> that's a deal. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's move on. We're going to do some great stuff here right now. Uh, as we get into our Q and A, um, the uh, members, the people that have been here uh, inside the Zoom feed, have been posting questions. Uh, for me, I'm going to take uh, the question on Bitcoin uh, and also uh, on gold and silver, and then I'm going to turn that over to Katie and Arvi, uh, and uh, they will take care of the rest. We don't have a ton of questions in there, so this might be a, a nice shorter segment. So, uh, but you'll get a great feel for uh, continuation of a great feel of how we approach this analysis. So let's uh, move over into Bitcoin. Yes, I am showing a monthly chart because this person said that they actually missed a big that missed the fact that uh, I, I didn't include uh, Bitcoin in my big picture analysis uh, at the end of the year. So I just brought you what uh, is the monthly chart, which I have shared with some of our members, uh, and that would be for level four only, uh, that uh, shows you that Bitcoin might actually have a problem here. And I'll show you the weekly and the daily also, and you get an idea. Maybe the most important thing to look at right now is that you could see on the bottom, there are actually monthly cycles have formed. And what I want you to see is that going way, way back over here into 2018, that's January of 2018, you had a big decline there. And the reason I have this oval right over here is just to show you that, well, this is towards the end of the cycle, which tends to be a period of risk. And you could see that from that peak over there, all the way down to the low was a loss of 79%. Uh, in that monthly cycle pattern. You could see the beautiful rhythmic action in here as there's money flows in and money flows out. Here, I started to use the uh, monthly reversal scout to give me the indication of where the real period of risk began right in here. And from the peak to the trough over there, it was a 70% loss in Bitcoin. This one had a monstrous move you see in Bitcoin where it got up to in the 65,000s and then here where the it turned over, Reversal Scout actually was pretty late in the cycle. And there was only a couple months left to fall in there, but still 39% decline right there. Here you could see that it got up to that all-time high. Here's where the Reversal Scout turned over. And then from peak to trough, a 78% loss right there. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you, even in the most positive scenario, a cycle like this, there's likely to be something like a 40, 50% decline at least. The halfway mark right over here on Bitcoin, which would be a 35% drop uh, in this period of risk right here, would take you down to around 32,000 right there. If it was a 43% loss, which in my opinion is still optimistic, it would take you down to 28,000. The other day I posted on Twitter, somebody, when I said that there is no support at 40,000, uh, I said, talk to me at you know, 30,000. I mean, that's because I felt it was a pretty good chance that it was getting down to 28,000 here sometime by mid-year. Now, this you could see I have pointing out, out into May right over here, as which is a little bit to the right of the ideal. The reason for that is because uh, I'm going to look at the weekly chart right over here in the daily chart, and you'll be able to see that this weekly chart here and this daily chart here, I'll blow those up for you to see. Now, this right over here is where that low is expected. And right over here, it looks like the low came a little early and then turned over and already failed. Now, the reason I have a note here for our members, which low is the one? I say momentum says the first one is the low. That means that this already turned over. And you could see in here where it turned over right over here. That was where we got into the declining phase, where it turned over here, it got into the declining phase. 
that is, this is a very good indication with this big shooting star that we've seen an important high. If that's the case, then it's likely to continue to move down right over here into this period out into late April or May. Here are the different scenarios where the supports are from the monthly here at 32,000, here at 28,000. So this is a very risky period, but it's early in this downward turn. You could see it got into the support zone and then began to bounce. I think that it's on the way down to 32,000 to 28,000 here between now and May. That would be a big disappointment uh, by many of the traders out there. Here you could see in here the Bitcoin pattern. Now this is important because we look at cycle configurations in here. Now there is an out of phase cycle that we're reviewing. That's the blue dotted one, but you could see how beautiful that one is right in here. And that says that's very important. See this cycle right here at that point. And this is the ETH, by the way. Uh, this cycle bracket right there. And ETH is in a much stronger pattern because there's speculation it's going to have its own cash ETF. Here is the important change. Now you could see, look at the Slim Ribbon PO. I mean, this is fantastic. As it keeps telling you each time that you get these signals that momentum is going to continue on the upside, you get the support in the Slim Ribbon right over here. But now the Slim Ribbon turned over, the Slim Ribbon PO turned red. And this configuration right over here is negative. See a higher bottom, higher bottom, higher bottom. Each of those higher peaks, lower bottom, it says it's going to fail right there. And that's why I have this note in here, sell pending. And it will tell us a lot about the condition of the weekly. You're getting this big upside pop right over here. And that's because there's some news out there that the people that investors in the Chinese market are disillusioned and they're going into Bitcoin instead, which is ridiculous. Anyway, I could see Bitcoin getting up over here to 44,000 and then rolling over and continuing this lower low track. Yes, all the way down to 30,000. What's the date right over here when I look at this? This is March 22nd. Again, right over here, I have this pointing out over here to as late as April. And that's because there might actually be more uh, a longer cycle out over there that happens again but march 22nd to my opinion is the earliest time that this is going to bottom and yes there is risk that it's going to fall down to 32,000 to 28,000 that is my big picture analysis that i didn't do at the end of the year but you requested it here on the bitcoin market quickly we'll quickly take us through gold and silver here is the gold market right here. We are extremely bullish in the gold market if you watched our show at the end of the year. Uh, and right now what we're seeing is it's in a consolidation right here. But look here on the weekly right there. This is where we're looking for this cycle to bottom. Still, we have momentum negative here, momentum negative here. So we don't want to anticipate too much. And we still have a little bit of time for it to decline and then we think it's going to move up again. So this is, if, if you notice that these lines here, that the trading actually got above the lines, as you see right over here, that's because there was a roll and I didn't adjust this yet. So I'll be adjusting it for our level four members and for people that get our charts hubs and level two, level three, uh, and that'll all be adjusted for the roll early part of next week. But a bottom due to form in here, and yes, we're looking for the potential of sizable upside move. Now you'll see in the silver market, forged less SI, that, uh, and I'll look at the same thing at the side-by-side -side right over here, <clears throat> Silver market looks like it wanted to bottom early, as you could see, as it moved up right over here, but still, still negative momentum conditions, as we can see here, negative momentum conditions. And this says to me that if we get this bounce that we're looking for in here, maybe it gets up into this area, into the 23s, 24 right here. That still has time over here to roll over. So I'm, my, I've been very optimistic on gold and silver, but really not looking until, you know, sometime in the late spring or summer before we get into these much more positive periods. So a bottom trying to form right over here, I'll call it bottoming phase, as you could see, as the trough came right over here, the trough is due right over here, and then a, a likely rally coming, but still not the runaway market that I'm expecting. I'm expecting that to come later in the year. So that is a look at Bitcoin, gold and silver, and I'm going to turn this over 
for the rest of the team. All right, Slim, thanks so much. Great job on those charts. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up a couple of questions. We only have, have a few today. Usually we got a whole bunch, but that's okay. Uh, let's first pull up TSLA. You should see the weekly and daily cycle analysis for Tesla. Now, this is not a good pattern here post-earnings. As we have lost this low here at 194.07, you can see that our next key dominant trough is not due until the fall of this year. So what that says is, overall, we'd be looking for a series of lower highs and lower lows going out into the fall. Now, keep an eye on this. We have this low here that's due over the next couple of weeks. We have a 61.8 Fib at 176.72 and a, a, uh, a level just below that, 160.20 or so. Around that area, if we sell off into that zone, We'd be looking for a bounce off of that level, but keep in mind, the core bias is pointed firmly to the downside. So after an uptick here, we'd still look for that to fail and then roll down. Now, what would change that core bearish picture that we're seeing? It would take a rally all the way up here through 247. Obviously, right now, we are nowhere near that. We are trading right around you know, 184.05 uh, or so. But again, we always have to have that level that say, hey, Something has changed here. If we shift over to the daily chart, again, there's a daily low due shortly. So, uh, so we certainly want to keep our eyes on this. However, you can see firmly in this clear downtrend, pulling back very sharply on earnings. Uh, there's a low that is due to, to, to right on 212. And the odds would favor a bounce off that. Keep in mind that would also line up to when this low is due here on the weekly as well. Okay, so that's the look at both the intermediate term and short term cycle analysis for Tesla. And the other one we'll, uh, we will show you here is Disney. Also an interesting uh, chart that is now setting up here on the longer term picture is we're seeing now a higher low basing cycle that is forming here in DIS, the low that is due 226 to right around 48. So what are we looking for? We are looking for a higher low to form versus this low right there at uh, right around that 79 quarter-ish area. Hold this zone from 89.79 to 85.67. If it can do so, then we look for it to then turn back up as we've drawn in and uh, and give you a, a solid move higher as we get out uh, into the later part of the year. Okay, so a, a bold picture really setting up at this point in Disney, but very important for uh, their to not have any kind of sharp sell on earnings. There is earnings 2.7 after hours, so we do have to keep our eyes on that. If we shift over now, you can see that this is acting well. We have a higher low that has formed. We are looking for at least a test of this old high in the uh, at the uh, right um, the 96 half ish area. We're very close to that. Not a huge call there. We're we're you know uh, trading around 95.13, so just a bit higher. Look for it to turn up again not see any kind of sharp move lower on earnings, grind a bit higher, and then roll back down as this next trough is due towards the end of March. Go back to the weekly time, uh, and you can see that would be in line with this weekly low as well. So good odds uh, that we would see a move higher off of that key trough that's due uh, in the later part of March uh, here in Disney. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand this back over to you, Slim, because uh, those are the only two charts that I saw that... Uh, came up here okay great that's it boy that was a short one wasn't it yeah it it sure was yeah okay All right, we're going to go look at the stock market now. I'm going to give you my analysis and projections. Please do read this slide. It takes uh, uh, a good look at how we approach our analysis and what that means for you. And the key thing we want to always to stress is trade ownership, that you own your trades and that you do manage the risk in those trades appropriately. Multiple time frame analysis and projections in the stock market. We're going to look at the S&P 500. Uh, in multiple time frame analysis, we'll take a look at the market condition monitor also. All right, so let's take a look as we switch over to, uh, we'll come back to that in a moment, uh, and uh, we'll go to the stock, first, to the stock market first. 
here is SPX uh, on the S&P 500, and we're only going to do uh, SPX uh, right now. I'm actually going to switch over to our member charts, which uh, has a, a little more analysis on there. This, by the way, is the grid that the level four members do get, but I'm only going to go on the top, uh, the top one right over here at the S&P uh, 500, and uh, you will see the uh, analysis in there. Switched over, and here is the S and P five hundred. So this is uh, what you see as the bull market, uh, the end of the bear market, and the uptrend in the bull market in the S and P five hundred. The uh, the chart that you see right over here uh, in these yellow areas, as I showed before when I did the monthly chart in Bitcoin. Uh, are the periods of risk, as you see. And now the next period of risk for the stock market is out here into this March through May period. And this is what I discussed in the year-end show where I thought that the risk was for a decline. Our uh, patterns suggested that it would get up uh, and uh, to about 5,000 or 50-50 uh, on the monthly chart. And this resistance up over here uh, which is from the daily is at 49.50. So this is kind of shorter term that we're looking at over here. And then uh, out over here after this cycle ends is where we're looking for the rally to come that actually gets up into that 5,000 area out uh, in the, I would say, Q3 period out over there. So we're looking for a pretty good size movement here to the downside. And then after that, moving back to the upside, it should fall into the support area here. One of the key things that I, I put in here that I want you to see, this is the 34-week uh, simple moving average. This is what, what we look at. A lot of people look at you know, the uh, 50s, or they look at the 200-day moving average. This is the one I look at. And it's important to look at uh, when you're looking at the cyclical analysis. The 34, we also use the 13 sometimes. And you can see that each of these declines right over here got into and passed that 34-week moving average, as you could see, in this uptrend. And the uptrend is very clear with higher highs and higher lows. Here you could see the downtrend with lower lows and lower peaks, and that it got up here and you know just barely got through that 34-week moving average, each of those rallies. So 34-week moving average is often very important. In very steep upside long-term moves, the 13-week tends to be even more important than the 34, but that's not what we have really going on right now. So you see the 34 moving up through here. Let's say that sometime out here in April, it gets up to 4,600. The support over here is 4,500 about. So we would expect that it would give up uh, from this 4,900 best case down three, 400 points. This is just an absolute best case. Now you see this note in here, it syncs with the daily cycle troughs in mid-March and in early May. So this low here could come in mid-March, or what could happen is that the, um, the low doesn't come until out over here into early May, something like that, based on what the daily patterns are telling us. There's a peak very likely to occur in here. This is a very important resistance area here. Uh, as we look at this, this is the 100% Fib extension at the top of that blue area. And this is the daily extensions right in here. So let's take a look here as we look at the daily chart. We do this one a little differently because what we do is we build uh, basically a cloud, as we call it, the, the slim cloud. This is a two different... Um, channels that occur in here. This would be kind of the average expected pattern that we have in here. And it would be, you know, making a higher high above that cycle because it was positive or getting up in here to this target zone, as we call it. That's a little blocked out uh, right there. The target zone being between the 78.6 and 100% Fib extensions. Those are the ones we put on the weekly chart. So it gets up here to the top of this zone. Now, this top of that right there at the 100% is at 49.54. It's not ridiculous that it could extend up into that time frame. Now, again, you can see that there's been a 
small shift in here where these cycles are minimally reduced. It doesn't change a whole lot. When you look back here, they're still pretty much perfectly aligned that we ghosted this cycle right over here because this came out a little bit early. Remember, we were looking for this trough to come out into mid-January, but it actually came in the first week of January, maybe six, seven, eight trading days earlier than we expected, so that we use that information to help us with our projections. This is an area it really should begin to fail and then get a correction. But you see, we're not looking for a big break in here. That's because this is only the minor cycle. That would mean that the next rally out over here on that minor cycle would set up what would be that bigger decline. If you look right over here, this uh, time frame right there puts you at March 18th. The next cycle beyond that puts you somewhere around the 1st of May. So it could be this cycle that has the big correction for the stock market that we have here on the weekly, or it could be the next correction uh, in the next cycle that forms, which would be much further out there and out into May. We don't really know which of those is going to contain, uh, didn't mean to go that far, is going to contain this corrective period and that when that period of risk comes in. But we do know that it's going to need to have a downturn in momentum. So this is the weekly chart again. And the reversal scout, you see where it turned up right over there, that told us about this trough. You see where it turned up here, it told us about this trough. See where it turned down here, it told us about that peak. We don't have that yet. So we have been bullish. We've been looking for the market to move up. Configurations positive, momentum positive. And we just follow this stuff. I mean, it's uh, uh, not, you know, when you break it down this way, the market just plainly speaks to you. You can see in here that the momentum in here, uh, based on the option bias study right over here, it has been positive except for two little periods right in here where some orange dots formed. But they were so, because there's a volatility component built in here, they were just barely in that area. And then those orange dots disappeared. Here it was much deeper, and you could see the orange dots remain. So I leave these warnings in here so that we can see there was actually a warning that it was slightly overdone, not to the point where it could really bring a big decline, and it only brought that modest decline right over there. We're still very positive. So this basically tells you put your option positions as negatively biased when it's red, put it as positively biased when it's green. That's good information. Here is a look at the Slim Ribbon and the Slim Ribbon PO on the daily chart. And you could see that way back over here is where the Slim Ribbon turned positive in November, right there. And each of these times that it gets down under the 25 and then ticks above it, it gives us a notice, essentially, that momentum conditions are continuing on the upside. This is an area chart that you could see in the slim ribbon, and that tells you still positive. There's no change. So we're going to need this to start to turn blue and then turn red uh, in order to, or is that purple? Uh, it's blue down over here. Uh, and then turn red to tell us that the momentum had changed and that we are going into the corrective period that we see right over here. So we're using the multiple time frames to help us with that. This is a two hour chart right over here. And what we have on here is the market condition indicator in the bottom. And when this is trading up here in the 90s and 100, it just tells you that the longer term momentum, this is a multiple time frame analysis indicator that gives more weight to the longer term, in other words, because the longer term has more power. And that just keeps telling us that when there's gonna be corrections, they're likely to move back to the upside. Now, right over here, you could see as we look at the Slim Ribbon PO, this is a little different use of it than I usually show, but you could see that there's here where there was an energy loss going on and couldn't get over the 75 and then turn down. That's when you were getting into a two hour corrective period. Now, this is for near term traders. This is using this as a guide for your day trading or short term swing trading. And here you could see again that this is uh, has some uh, an energy loss going in in here because it can't get up over these levels. So we might have this correction going on. Uh, there's a um, just get this uh, pointer up here. There's kind of a, uh, a, a consolidation that you see happening right over here. 
but the two hour momentum is still very strong. So it's like a domino effect. The two hour were turned down first. This might be the warning of the loss of energy. When the two hour turns down, the momentum negative will show right over here. Then it will start to look like it's turning down and maybe getting into the lower channels over here on the daily. You'll start to see this neutralize in the bottom on the option bias indicator. And then you will lastly see this weekly one turning down right over here. And then we will know that we are in a correction. But what we're looking at very clearly is the fact that nothing has changed. Everything is still positive. Everything that we look at is very positive. The configurations are looking great. And that is uh, a likelihood that the market will continue to be on the firm side. That means modest corrections, but getting squeezed by the fact that it's a big resistance and real high valuation. So upside is going to be tougher to come by. And you'll start to see the downside have bigger days or bigger hours on the downside as that begins to change. Let's uh, take a look quickly as we switch over and we take a look at the market condition monitor. This is our pr proprietary app uh, that is available for level three and level four members. The difference right over here right now is that the inner day exists on the level four, but the uh, uh, three different uh, uh, time frames are available on level three. Uh, you can either look at it in trader mode or time frame mode that you see right over here. So depending on the time frame, it tells you the conditions. And I just want you to see right over here as we look at the uh, indexes right here that they are uh, the S SPY is very bullish. The QQQ has ticked down from very bullish to bullish still. The IWM, which doesn't have a lot of strength, is neutral. And the diamonds are still very bullish. I mean, they're still showing good strength. And you could see Apple peaking out here uh, as a still bullish right there. But you could see the dates here that SPY turned positive uh, to, from bullish to very bullish uh, about a week ago, where the QQQ turned ticked down from very bullish to bullish only today. Uh, you can see that. So uh, the uh, diamonds actually ticked up to very bullish from bullish today. You can. This is just an amazing app in here. And uh, you can see in here as I scroll the conditions, you can see the weakest ones, the ones that are very bearish. Now I'm looking at short term here. If I want to look at intermediate term, well, it's going to change. The intermediate term conditions, as you could see, are uh, very uh, bullish uh, for Caterpillar, the Diamonds, XLF, Micron, Qualcomm. And right over here, you could see they're very bearish. And here for uh, Ford, GD, Newmont. So you see the uh, golds are bad. They need to really have some significant changes. And if you're a level four member, you could get notified by the type of a change that you want uh, through our Discord notification system. So uh, this is just a fantastic application. And again, level three and level four. Uh, and we're uh, planning some upgrades in here very soon. That is a look at the stock market. Uh, I hope that was very informative to you. Remember, if you're interested in the NASDAQ, you're interested in the Russell, um, that information comes out in our charts. You'll be able to see that as I update them this weekend. Uh, and uh, there'll be a special update on, uh, on uh, Monday because I'm presenting that analysis to a small group of people. And you'll learn more about that as we go forward. Uh, and the uh, uh, then, of course, uh, RB presents all of this uh, in future speak. So if you want to see all of that live analysis uh, on all of these indicators and all 24 of the uh, futures and ETFs that we do, then RB presents that every single Wednesday in the uh, future speak show. Uh, for those of you that are just peeking in here at the end of the show or didn't see the whole show or watching a YouTube clip, we have this level two special that's going on right now. And uh, Matt did a great job of explaining that uh, earlier in the show so you can go back and watch it. But you get everything in level one, everything in level two that you see listed here for just $29.50 for the first month. Uh, you'll get a great handle on our analysis and just click the learn more button on the top. Uh, of the uh, website and any questions you have, write to mattaslim.com. The special is for upgrades or new level two members. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're new to Ask Slim, you, know, you can learn from our team of pros. Just go to AskSlim.com and look around at that broad uh, amount of education and analysis uh, that we bring for traders uh, and investors. All right, team, that's it. We wrapped it up. That was a great show, and I'm proud of you all. Want to say anything? That was great. A lot of fun. Always great getting together with the analyst team and, and sharing with our, our members and the YouTube audience. It's fantastic. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in two weeks. Have a great weekend, everybody. Great job, everybody. We'll see you okay. in two weeks. I'm off next week, so no show. All right, everybody. All the best. Okay, bye-bye.